Question 10, describe the purpose of data validation. Then for two marks, it's gonna be very straightforward. We're gonna say that it's that the validation aims to make sure that the data is sensible, reasonable, complete, and with acceptable boundaries. We're also gonna say it's the process of checking the data against a set of validation rules and set up in the program, and that validation only makes sure that it's valid, it's reasonable. We can't check it's exactly what the user's intended. A great example of this always is in the year of birth. Um, you could put 1996 and that might be correct, but if you've accidentally typed 1969, well, it's still a valid year, the computer is not gonna tell you off for that, but it's not correct, it's not what the user intended. Part B here, write an algorithm to validate a date in this format. Now, this algorithm is a bit more in depth than you think, there's two massive chunks there, but the basic overview is after declaring everything, we check the month is within a certain range, we check the day is in a certain range, and we check the year is within a certain range. And what they've done is they've used a flag variable just to turn on error messaging. So if the flag is zero, then it's correct. And if the flag is anything else, it is incorrect. So the moment anything happens to create a flag, we know that that value is incorrect. But again, the code's only indicative. What's important is the bullet point list of the things that they were looking for. So we get a mark for declaring and initializing. And you notice that's a common theme for this entire unit, a mark for declaring and initializing. Even if I had no idea what the algorithm they were asking me to write should look like, I'd declare and initialize some variables and hopefully get a few marks. There's a mark for using a flag variable or something that we can turn on or off to say if there's an error. There's a mark for a string handling the year, a mark for one handling the month, and a mark for one handling the day. Uh, there's a mark for working out the leap year. There's a mark for monthly comparisons for 31 days, 30 and 29 and 28 days. Uh, there's a mark for outputting the correct message at the end as well. So you can see there's quite an involved thing really. And we get a lot of this for free in most programming language. This is a solved problem already. We normally don't have to write this much code to validate a date. Question six, explain the purpose of a shortest path algorithm, part A. Well, the point of a shortest path algorithm, as we all know, is that it is to find the shortest path between two vertices on a graph. Each path between adjacent vertices is weighted with a cost and these weightings are used to calculate the total cost of different paths between two vertices. And the path of the smallest cost is the shortest path. Now, the number one bit of feedback I can give you about this particular past paper question is look at the use of the technical language. It is not talking about nodes. It is not talking about links between them. It is using vertices, adjacent vertices, weightings, paths it's using all those key terms that we encountered when we we're talking about it and it's using them confidently that's what they expect of you as well part b here's a diagram show how this network and its reversal costs can be represented using a 2d array well presumably all we're doing for this is showing the node the cost and from where it came uh, and this was that first example and again you can see a bit more of this if you go to section four there's an entire subunit about this what we can do is we can write down the potential path. So we could do A, B, B to D, D to E, and that is 25. We could do A, C, C to D, and D to E, and that's 24. And so we can see that Q is actually less than P, uh, so path Q is the shortest. So we're saying that A, C, C, D, and D, E is the shortest path. Part 10, describe the term data compression and explain how data compression algorithms are used. Well, data compression is just reducing the amount of memory that a file uses. The level of file compression is measured using the compression ratio, and the compression ratio is the size of the compressed file divided by the original file size. Compression algorithms are often used to employ different methods to reduce file sizes depending on the type of file. There are two main types of compression algorithms as well, lossy and lossless. Lossy reduces the file by removing some data and lossless means we can get back to the original file. So nothing too off the wall in that question there.